Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T, and if true crime is your jam, and like me, you enjoy delving into unsolved cases, trying to figure out who done it, please consider subscribing. BK, as in Benny Keys, played recorded calls on his channel yesterday. In one of the calls, Summerwell's mother, Candace Bly, can be clearly heard talking to BK. She sounds inebriated and slurs her words. Basically, she's speaking in her normal voice. On the call, Candace says something highly questionable. She states that after Don was taken into custody, she asked Tim where Don's phone was. Candace is referring to Tim Mullins, as in the Tim Mullins, who is the Wells family media manager. Candace states that Tim told her that he had Don's phone in his car. To me, it sounds like Tim Mullins maybe drove Don to the jail or courthouse, or maybe met Don at the courthouse when Don was taken into custody for violating his probation. Remember, he's currently in jail, serving an 11-month, 29-day sentence. Apparently, Don either left some of his belongings in Tim's car, or he gave Tim some of his belongings to take back to Candace. Among the belongings were Don's phone, his jacket, a tie, and car keys. Although Don expected Tim to take all of the possessions to Candace, including the phone, per Candace, Tim only gave her Don's jacket, tie, and car keys. Tim kept the phone. Tim allegedly didn't give Candace the phone back until two weeks later. According to Candace, Tim went through Don's phone and downloaded all the data. Candace says that she loves Tim to death, but he has done some underhand shit. I wish she would have elaborated on what she meant by underhand shit. Why would there be a phone belonging to Don Wells that nine months out from the day Summer disappeared still hasn't been turned into the TBI? And who among Team Wells including their so-called private investigators, knew about this phone. What else might Tim Mullins still have in his possession that hasn't been turned into the TBI? You may recall that Tim Mullins inserted himself early on into the Summerwells case. He made videos on YouTube, and then he became the Wells' official media manager. Along with sharing the recorded phone calls yesterday, BK also made two pleas. The first plea was to Tim Mullins. BK said to Tim, You gotta turn this shit in, bro. The second plea was to Candace Bly. BK said to her, Do the right thing. Do the right thing. That message can only mean one thing, right? Also heard in BK's recorded calls was BK talking about he and a lady named Penny were working on the timeline for June 15th and applying Grandis's claim that she took a nap right after getting home from the trip to Kingsport that day. BK and Penny apparently were trying to figure out where Don and Candace may have met to do a handoff. I'm assuming BK and Penny meant a handoff of Summer, either alive or deceased. Was that so that Don could dispose of a body? Was that to do something else with Summer? We don't know. So BK has outed himself to Candace. He's no longer her friend. But was he ever really her friend? Is BK only doing all this now to save his own derriere? The whole thing is downright confusing. 
in my opinion, BK should just explain it all in plain language so that we don't all have to try to decipher Candace's slurred words and trying to figure out what in the heck is going on. Another crazy day in the Summer Wells case. Between Jose Roman showing up and now all these phone calls from BK, everything is just, well, beyond crazy. Summer deserves so much better than this circus act. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories.